Hi everyone, today I want to show you how to make grapefruit squares. These are a little bit different from the lemon squares, but still really tasty. These are the ingredients. You can pause the video here or they'll also be listed in the description box below. You don't have to use barley flour. You can also use cake flour, pastry flour, or all-purpose flour. And then the chocolate and icing sugar are really optional. First, we're going to make the cookie base. So in a bowl, add the flour, the brown sugar, and the salt, and then stir everything together. And hopefully your brown sugar isn't clumpy like mine, so you don't have to spend as much time breaking the clumps apart. But I guess it doesn't really matter too much if they're lumps because it's just the base. And we're going to be mixing it more when we add the butter and the egg. When you're happy that your flour, sugar, and salt are mixed well together, you can add the butter. So 75 grams of cold butter, not frozen, just fridge cold is fine or else you're going to have trouble breaking it up. And then with a spatula or two knives or your fingers, just break the butter up into small pieces, evenly distribute it within the flour. You can break the butter apart into smaller pieces than you would a flaky pie dough. We're not really going for flakiness, we just want a crumbly base. Then add the egg yolk and the vanilla extract and then stir everything together. You're still going to end up with a pretty crumbly mixture, but that's okay, that's how it's supposed to be. When you get a pebbly mixture like this, you can pour it into a lined square tin. This recipe fills a 7 inch or 18 centimeter square tin, or you can split a regular cake tin, which is 8 inches by 12 inches or 20 centimeters by 30 centimeters in half like what I'm doing here. Make sure you line it with parchment paper and then just press the crumble mixture into the bottom. And we're going to bake this first for about 12 minutes at 325 Fahrenheit or 165 Celsius to prevent a soggy crust. While the base is baking, you can make the custard. So it's four whole eggs and half a teaspoon of vanilla paste. Vanilla extract is fine to use too, it's the same measurement. Then you want to add the cake flour. This is done in two additions just to prevent clumps. And I don't usually sift ingredients if I can help it, but in this case you really don't want lumps and if you put cake flour into it, you're going to have lumps. So make sure you sift everything and then add it in two additions whisking in between and you notice I didn't use barley flour because you want a smooth texture and unfortunately if you have the bran part of grain particles you're gonna not have a smooth custard so adding the cake flour in slowly nice being nice and patient and whisking in between the additions and after the additions and then when I'm stirring I try to stir from the center and then just let the extra flour cling to the side of the bowl. When it's ready to be absorbed into the mixture, it'll slowly absorb. And this way you can prevent clumps. Now that the mixture is nice and smooth, we can add our juice. So you can add about 2 tablespoons or an eighth of a cup of either lemon juice or passion fruit juice. I just happen to have passion fruit juice that I needed to use up. Both work well with grapefruit. And then to add our star ingredient, grapefruit juice. So I am also straining this to prevent the pulp from going in because you don't really want seeds or pulp in a grapefruit bar. So adding 3 quarters of a cup or 230 grams of grapefruit juice. If you're straining it over your mixture like me, best to do it by weight because you're going to want to discount the extra pulp that you're leaving out. And then adding the sweetener, so we have 80 grams of granulated sugar. I prefer my desserts less sweet. You might want to add more if you like things on the sweet side, but I found 80 grams to be sufficient. And then just give everything a quick stir. I didn't find that I need to, to dissolve all the sugar right now or to use super fine sugar. There's enough liquid and the cooking time is long enough for all the sugar to be dissolved. And finally, adding about a teaspoon of grapefruit zest. And grapefruit zest you don't usually see in a lot of dessert recipes and I'm not adding that much. It's more tart compared to other citrus peels but adding a little bit really enhances the grapefruit flavor. The crumble base should have been fully baked and cooled by now 
and then we can just gently pour the custard over the base and then return the whole thing to the oven for another 20 to 25 minutes at 325 degrees Fahrenheit or 165 Celsius, the same temperature. Check it at around 18-20 minutes, take it out when there's still a slight wobble and let it cool completely before you remove it from the pan. And look, it's out of the oven, there are no cracks. And you can see the really nice flex of grapefruit zest. So then, finally, I decided to add some chocolate. It's partially for flavor, but I think I mostly wanted it to look a bit more fancy. And then I had lots of chocolate left, so then I think I went a bit excessive with the drizzling. But I guess there's no such thing as too much chocolate. And then I decided to sprinkle on icing sugar as well, which was probably more excessive than necessary. But anyway, this is what you end up with. They look pretty good, they taste really good. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know if you have comments or questions. And you can also follow me on Instagram where I upload pictures of things I eat and make and see. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.